With me now from the Daily Signal, Jarrett Stepman. Jarrett, good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. All right, Jared, it seems to me in our nation, in our nation's capital that elected officials, and I'm talking about Republicans specifically, do not understand that these are not silly, you know, silly groups of hippies that are living on their parents' dime on college campuses, just messing around, and that someday they'll meet the real world. They don't realize this is a cultural revolution. It is very much, and I think we're really seeing, I, I think it was great that we saw Senator Tom Cotton stand up and call this what it is. This is mobocracy. This is mob rule coming to America that Abraham Lincoln talked about so eloquently in his 1838 Lyceum Address and explained how this would undermine free government. It would make law-abiding citizens afraid, afraid to stand up to the mob. It would, it would give power to those who are in the mob to dictate to the rest of society how they should think, what they should do. And I think that's really the danger of what's happening here. I think the far left in America wants to silence anybody who would dare question the narrative. This is not about truth. The truth is something that's dangerous to them. What they need is narrative, and they're willing to shut down and silence anybody who stands in front of them. That's what all the statue toppling, that's what all these attacks on news networks, that is what the, the bottom line, that's what this is about. And explain, too, you wrote an entire book about this, by the way, which I encourage our viewers to get, but explain to our viewers why it is a critical part of a Marxist cultural revolution to destroy history and rewrite rewrite history, essentially, and then teach that revisionist history to the next generation. Yeah, as I wrote my book, The, the War on History, this has been a long-term project by the left. The left has gotten into our schools, our public schools, obviously into academia, higher higher ed in this country. And they're teaching to young Americans uh, the opposite of what our schools used to do. They used to teach uh, a patri patriotism. They used to teach uh, civics, how you can be an informed patriot in this country. Now they are doing the opposite. They are un-Americanizing America's young children. And, and, and that's we're seeing the fruit of that. We're seeing the fruit of radical leftist historian Howard Zinn, who wrote A People's History of the United States. Well, now those vandals who you see out there toppling statues and desecrating property, that's the fruit of that. That's the fruit of that happening for years and decades in this country. That's what has to be stopped. And we need leaders, people who call themselves conservatives, to stand out there and defend Western civilization, to defend America, these institutions that have built the greatest country on earth. Now is the time for free people to stand up. Is that how to stop it? Because I think that's the question that a lot of people are asking. It seems like if you take the bird's eye view of the United States, radical leftists dominate Hollywood and entertainment, all of our movies and mass media. They dominate uh, universities and higher level education. Now they seem to dominate the public school level all the way down to kindergarten and pre-K pre through high school. They dominate um, news organizations. They dominate... Uh, Congress. And when I say they dominate Congress, I know that Republicans have a majority in the Senate. I know Republicans uh, own the White House right now, but none of these Republicans or very few of these Republicans have the spine to stand up and fight the, the social issues, fight the cultural issues. And every time we surrender these issues, it brings us one step closer to these ridiculous anarchist thugs in Chaz or Chop or whatever they want to call it today being successful in their effort to transform America from the free nation that we know and love and has been prosperous and has uplifted just tens of hundreds of millions of people around the world to the Marxist state that they want. Well, I think, unfortunately, there's a lot of fear out there and, and, and uh, frankly, a lot of people that are, are simply cowardly to stand up for these things. And I think I really, truly believe, Liz, I really believe if, if leaders do stand up at this time and say to the American people exactly what's happening, defend this country, there are people around this country who will rally to that. I do believe, deeply believe that Americans still believe in the Constitution. They still believe in the rule of law. They still believe ultimately the United States was built on something good and great. You preach that to the American people right now as they see lawless mobs around this country uprooting and destroying our history, destroying it right in front of our eyes, attacking maybe people next as well. If you have leaders who will have the courage to stand up to that, uh, there's no limit to what they can do. People are looking for leadership in these times. That's absolutely necessary, especially conservatives. We are conservatives standing for what America stands for. We need to speak up and speak out. Shows like what you're doing, Liz, are vital at this time to rally the American people against us.
Well, the problem is I'm extremely fortunate, as are you, to be in a career where I'm free to say whatever I want and standing up for conservative values, standing up for the principles that made our nation great doesn't put me in the line of, you know, being canceled. That's not a threat. That's what I'm hired to do. The problem is cancel culture is a tactic that causes people to fear. They fear speaking up because they worry that it's going to have negative repercussions on themselves, their spouse, their family, their livelihood, their job, and their their life, their neighborhood life. They fear cancel culture. And I don't blame them. It's ruthless. No, I don't either. Frankly, it's becoming, in many cases, uh, totalitarian. They want to to unperson people around America. And again, that's why people who are in institutions like ours, Liz, need to stand up at this time because we do have that that defense that many other Americans don't have. If we can't be seen to have courage in this moment, then how do we expect people around this country to follow us? How can we expect people to actually stand up on their own, people who have far more to lose uh, in their lives? So I think that's why it's necessary. This is about this is a, a situation that requires leadership right now. I think there's a crisis there uh, that we don't have enough of it. But I, I think what we saw, especially in the last few days, with the mobs in front of the White House attacking a statue there, that should be a wake-up call around the country. You know, leaders in Congress, senators, congressmen who have enormous power, uh, people in the uh, conservatives in the media and in institutions around this country, this is their moment. This is their moment to stand up and, and be strong and be brave in the face of all of this, because I think there are a lot of Americans around this country who may not have even in the past been amenable to their views that will stand up for the rule of law. I do believe that, because if that's not true, then we really don't have a country to more doing. I mean, that's really the, the, the bottom line of all this. If, if the American people can't at this moment stand up for the basic rule of law and the Constitution, then America's lost anyway. And, and we I don't can believe- see... We can see with these autonomous zones what the alternative is. You can choose between America or you can choose between lawless anarchy where vigilante justice reigns, where warlords are dictators, where white people are told that they're not allowed to go in certain places, where murderers are not able to be uh, resolved because police are blocked from entering. Law enforcement is no such thing. It's a collectivist communal um, disaster of an experiment because private property is not recognized. I mean, that's your alternative. That's what the radical left is standing for. If you don't stand up for what our nation, for what America actually is, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, inherent, individual, God-given rights protected by our Constitution, that's what you're going to get instead. And I hope that this is eye-opening for the American people. Jarrett, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it.